Hey everybody, Rob Mullins here. How's it going? So today what we're going to do is a jazz fusion tune. And this is a Herbie Hancock tune called Cantaloupe Island. If you're playing any jazz at all on the keyboards, you probably know about this tune. It's a hugely famous tune by Herbie. And um, this is a straight eighth note feel. So you're really not going to want to be playing any swingy stuff on this tune. Um, it's pretty much a straight eighth note thing. So there's a worksheet that goes with this. And uh, take a look in the in the uh, text box on YouTube to grab the worksheet. The song is really simple, but it's deceptively simple because if you don't play the right stuff on there, you're going to embarrass yourself. <laughs> so anyway, let's just take a look at the three chords that are on this tune. It's an F minor... Right. Here's a position one F minor chord. And if you've been following my series, a position one chord has a three on the bottom of the voicing, three, five, seven, nine. That's the first four bars. Next four bars is a D flat seven. And you know, I like to put the root in the five at the bottom. And it's also a position one, three. And that's a six, seven, nine. Yeah, man. All right, that's a cool sound. Just hearing that. It's gorgeous. Now, in the third chord, it's a little bit different because it's the sound of a minor 11th, kind of a chordal McCoy Tyner style voicing. Here's my root and five I like. And then I'm going to go 11th or the fourth, seven, and the third on the top. All right, so those are the basic three chords of the tune. So what I'm going to show you today is how to use <clears throat> position three chords and some variations so that when you're playing in a combo or a big band and you're comping for a soloist, that you will sound absolutely great. So in my own time, before I go into the band situation, I'll noodle around on the chords a little bit and I'll try stuff. You know, it's kind of moving some things around over the top. And I like pitch bin on a road sound like this, too. I think pitch bin is cool. Yeah, that sounds great. And you can see I'm just kind of randomly stacking stuff out of that F scale on top of the chord here's the d flat chord i like adding a plus nine i mean a plus 11 in this when it sees the d flat there it's not seeing the d flat for some reason there we go d flat 13 sharp 11 that's the symbol i'm looking for i might play it nice spread up top there like that all sounds good and then on the third chord of the tune the d minor 11 you got this and you can color this any way you want just by adding white keys up top if you want to play what they call a cluster voicing you could do this herbie does a lot of that on his rose plank or maybe this one it's kind of cool throw a little whammy bar on that stuff right sounds cool so what we're going to do now is we're going to comp for a flute solo and uh, let's just grab the worksheet and start looking at that while we do this because we're going to want to see the voicings and see how they're written out and how they're going to be applied to comping for this flute solo. So you can see the voicings are up top there. Position three chords, remember it's this position one thing with your left hand and the left hand is indicated the bass clef here. And uh, I don't know, I, I'm gonna kind of call this piano clef because when a device sees this, it just sees it in a really different sort of way than the piano player would, but left hand is four notes, right hand is three notes. 
And as you know, from looking at my jazz piano voicings book, I put a root and a five and another root on top. And that's my big two-handed voicing. All right, so uh, let's see what's at bar seven. Here's the D flat chord with this. Yeah, that sounds cool. All right, yeah. And then the D minor chord. That's all cool too. So let's rock and roll and play behind the flute player. And we're just gonna play these football chords or whole note chords behind the flute. So here we go. minor let's do another chorus So you get the idea, right? That's the idea of that basic, just kind of that whole note football thing in there. And what you really want to have happening is just that as a simple starting point. Now, you can even do a, depending on your soloist, you can even, even do a simpler kind of starting point, which is just going to be the left hand in the worksheet. And um, that would be all you would be doing is just one hand of it this part right here because sometimes a soloist needs to build you need to have something sparse going on instead of that big two-handed thing now our first variation that we're going to do we're going to look here at bar 17 on this chart at this thing that says two bar rhythm now if you're in a smaller group particularly a like a quartet quintet something like that, um, you'll add in some rhythms. And a lot of times people ask me, well, what the heck do I do rhythmically with comping? Because they just don't want to play whole notes or footballs all the time. So what I did here is I wrote out for you a two-bar rhythmic phrase. And um, that is going to be, uh, you know, you see the repeats there, but that's just going to be the rhythm that we play over all of the chord changes of the tune. So we're going to do the whole form of the tune with the rhythm that's at bar 17 and 18. So here we go. And that makes a lot of sense. Doesn't really work that well with what the flute's doing here because he's gotten a lot busier. But you have to be able to interact with a soloist. And sometimes when they do things that are the most intense is when you'll back off. All right, so now let's try a four bar rhythm here. Four bar rhythm is gonna be bars 19 through 23. That's gonna be like one, two, three, four, one. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one. All right. And same thing on the D minor chord. So, you know, soloists vary a lot, and you have to kind of listen for what they do and what they're wanting to do in order to match somehow, um, you know, something that's going to be 
pleasant for them because uh, I remember being at a big man gig that was a huge all-star thing. And it was uh, Dave Grusin, Lee Rittenauer, Tom Scott, and uh, a whole bunch of other really great players. And I was the young kid on the block and I was comping and about six bars into the sax solo, Tom Scott stood up and stopped the band. And then he told the director, looking right at me, he said, I can't play over that bleep. <laughs> and I was like, I'm so sorry, Mr. Scott. <laughs> sorry about that. I can't play over that. So, you know, you got to kind of feel out what's going on. Because if you're playing with a weaker soloist, you're going to want to do more. And if you're playing with a really strong soloist, you're probably going to do less. Also, in a big band context, you're probably going to want to listen for when the little, you know, behind the soloist figures come in there, or little sax hole notes or rhythms or trumpets in a section, because a lot of times arrangers like to put interesting things in there. So um, now as the last part of the tutorial, I would just want to show you a couple other things, which are ways that you can do chromatic alterations to these chords. So if you're getting bored, that's always been my problem is I just get bored with the same old thing all the time. I might take a chord like this, right? And this is a position three defined as a position three because you've got your three, five, seven, nine, and then root and five on top. That's right out of my voicing book. And I'm going to just figure out what is the half step above that, all right? So that's F minor, then F sharp minor. Right, or G flat minor, and then back down. Now the half step below is E. Right, and then back to the F. So now for the D flat seven. Uh, to the D, half step up, back to the home base, and then C is a half step low, right? So you can see all I'm doing is just half step stuff. Here's the D minor, E flat, all right, D flat. So I'm just learning what's a half step above and below the chord on the chart or the target chord, right? And that'll give you a lot of variety uh, in there when you're thinking about, okay, well, maybe I wanna add in some other kind of chordal information or inspire the soloist with a uh, you know chromatic idea. And so I'm gonna do that right now. And we're going to go back to the top of this tune. By the way, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Thanks for being part of it. And uh, I'm having a lot of fun doing these. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you want a specific topic covered, you can email me at info at planetmullins.com. And also my books and... Um, my music lessons page are listed in the description box. So feel free to hit me up that way as well. Okay, so this is gonna be using those little chromatic variations this time to just add a little life to it. See how that works? That's kind of cool, man. That add, add in, adds in just a really nice little flavor in there that kind of gives it some variety. And uh, because of the fact that horn players like to take a pentatonic lick, you know, 
and go up a half step and then go back down. I think that's why I started doing that in the first place because I hear somebody, you know, doing a pentatonic lick going up a half step and uh, back down. And then I would just follow them with the chords. Copying, good copying is really about good chord playing and, you know, learning the taste of it, knowing when to do what. Um, and don't forget the Theolonius Monk uh, way of comping on a bunch of the things that he did with Miles because you'll hear the piano drop out and uh, there'll all of a sudden be, you know, they'll play the head of the tune or whatever. And then you're thinking, hey, man, there's nobody comping any of the chords. And I just always surmise that Miles would give one of those classic looks over to whoever was on the piano and the power of his look would be shut up and play nothing <laughs> right and sometimes that's the best thing that you can do especially if you know the soloist is frustrated or the director's frustrated you can always just lay out for four bars just don't lose your place in this song okay so last item this is going to be adding in substitute chord and a turnaround in the middle of the tune. So we're cruising along. We've got four bars of this. And, you know, in the third bar, this is still going to be the F minor. And then I like to add in, anytime I've got this distance to go, one, two, three, four chords down, four roots down. Right? And if I stayed with minors, it would be that. But I like doing the autumn leaves turn around in there. So I'll go F minor, then E7, E flat minor, D13, and to the D flat in that spot of the tune. So, you know, I'll just kind of play that a little bit. Fourth bar. Chromatic, right? So slow, it's like this. Right? And that's in the fourth bar of Cantaloupe Island. All right, last item, substitute chords. Now, as you guys know, I can get pretty bored playing the same thing all the time. If you've ever been to one of my gigs, and you hear me playing this tune, one of the things I like at the end of the tune on the D minor part, because we've already done, you know, everything up to the D minor and it's gonna go. Right, now there's a lot of variants that you can put in here to kind of spice it up. So I'll play this. And on the back half of that, I'll go up a half step. That's a chromatic chord substitution that I like. And then on the fourth beat of that bar, I'll add in the bass, moving up chromatically to E, and then back to the F, right? So. And there's a million places you can go with that second chord. How about a G flat? Chords and harmony are so fun. It's just one of my favorite things to talk about. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on Herbie Hancock's Cantaloupe Island. And if you want to watch me playing Herbie's Fazioli piano, I've done that in several, several of my concert videos from Pierre's Fine Pianos in LA. And that is the home of Herbie's Fazioli. And when I do concerts there, I get to play that. So you can find those videos on YouTube. One of them is called Escher's Etude, and another one is called Prime Time. All right, so so long. Enjoy it. Hope you enjoy the channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.